Hi, brothers and sisters. It's wonderful to be here with you. This is Brother Lee. Um, our family's put together. It sounds like someone's trying to get on. We'll go ahead and just march forward. Um, our family put together a music video for the ward. We, we love our ward. We love our ward and we love the Savior. We love, uh, we love a lot of things. One of the things we really love is music. One of the reasons why we love music so much is because the spirit speaks through music. Um, and so what we'll, we wanted to do was just um, present some musical presentations to you today. Um, but before we begin, I just remember that I need to uh, have a prayer. And so um, I was wondering, would, would Brother Jerome, would you mind offering a prayer for us? Sure. Wonderful, thank you. Our Heavenly Father, we are thankful for this beautiful day. We're thankful for each other that we can meet as a reward. We're thankful for the many things that thou has given us, <clears throat> that thou has protected us, kept us safe. We ask a special blessing on those around us who may be ill, that they can recover quickly. We ask for thy continued protection at this time. We're thankful for our good church leaders. We're thankful for our bishop and his counselors. We're thankful for our prophet and our stake president and all those that serve with them. We ask a special blessing as well at this time on missionaries throughout the world. Bless them with peace and with the opportunities to bring the gospel to, the, to those who most need it, that all of thy children on earth can hear the gospel message. We ask a blessing on those who are participating in this meeting this day. Bless them with thy spirit, as well as bless our own hearts. We will all be edified. We love thee, Father. We love thy Son. We are thankful for his example and for his sacrifice for us. We say these things in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Brother Jerome, for that wonderful prayer. Um, before we get started, I just wanted to just say a few words about an experience I had with music when I was very young. Um, I lived in a place called Las Cruces, New Mexico. I don't know if any of you have ever been there. And I was a small boy. We, they had just built a, a chapel. And my recollection was we had just had sacrament meeting and I was wandering around the church. Everyone else seemed to have left. And I ended up in the primary room. And the best that I can put this together, somebody had left the... Um, Someone had left a tape recorder on or something, but the, the Tabernacle Choir was singing Earth with Her 10,000 Flowers. And I remember as I stood there as a small boy, this powerful feeling came over me by the Spirit, witnessing to me that God had created the earth and it was a beautiful place. Our Savior lived and that uh, he loved us. He loved me. And I knew the church in that moment, I knew the church was true. <clears throat> and so this was an experience with music that I had had. And... And I find that throughout my life, I, I keep having these experiences where the Lord speaks to me through music. Uh, sometimes it's in a dream and, and, and other ways. But so what we wanted to do today is, is uh, we prepared this for you. We have about five or six songs we want to play. Uh, Sister Lee and, and Jennifer Gillen will be playing the cello, the recorder, and the piano. And uh, so what we're going to do is we'll, um, I'm going to put it on. I'm going to leave it off mute, <laughs> obviously, um, but I'm going to uh, take, the, uh, take the video off so we can share some pictures with you as we go along, so you'll hear how this goes. But we just want to uh, let you know how much we love the Lord. We love uh, each of you. We love our war and our, our leadership. And we, we hope that you'll feel the spirit through this music today. So we'll go ahead and begin. Okay, the first, the first piece that we're going to perform today is called Box Suite for Unaccompanied, Unaccompanied Cello Number 1 with Ave Maria. 
I'll say a few words about it. The Bach Suite for Unaccompanied Cello Number no. 1 is the first of six cello suites written by Johann Sebastian Bach in the period of time around 1720. Musicians and scholars agree that there is perhaps no other single set of compositions that have had more of a lasting impact in music history than Bach's suite for unaccompanied cello. And yet, he had to wait 165 years after his death in 1750 to receive any recognition for the genius of this creation. In CPR Classical, Yo-Yo Ma said, quote, Bach's cello suites have been my constant musical companions. For almost six decades, they have given me sustenance, comfort, and joy during times of stress, celebration, and loss. Over the years, I came to believe that in creating these works, Bach played the part of a musician scientist expressing precise observations about nature and human nature. End of quote. It's a Bach suite for unaccompanied cello, number one, with Javi Maria. The next piece that we have prepared for you today is I Love to See the Temple. Janice Cap Perry in Meridian Magazine related how she was influenced by her mother to write I Love to See the Temple. As a teenager growing up on a farm in Oregon, I felt a deep reverence for the temple. As I watched my mother painstakingly preparing her white temple clothing for a trip to the Idaho Falls Temple, I sensed the significance of this experience for her. 
I asked questions as she ironed and her answers made an indelible impression on my young heart. I began to love the temple as she did and made promises to myself that I would someday go there too. 25 years later, a state primary president in Provo, and who knows, it may have been our state, instituted a weekly five minute temple presentation in all of the primaries in our stake and asked me to write a song that could be played or sung to introduce that temple moment each week. Drawing on my earliest temple feelings, things I had felt when I was in primary and then in young women, I composed the song, I Love to See the Temple. Interestingly, in the LDS Living's 100 Greatest LDS Songs of All Time, Perry's I Love to See the Temple made the list at number 22. The next song that we prepared for you is I Am a Child of God. I'll say a few words about the history of this song. When Naomi W. Randall woke up in the middle of the night and penned a children's song more than 40 years ago, she never dreamed that one day it would be sung in 90 languages by millions of people around the world. <clears throat> Recalling the experience of writing I Am a Child of God in 1957, Sister Randall explained that she wrote the words while preparing for a primary program in the Salt Lake Tabernacle. The theme of the program was a child's plea. That night in her North Ogden, Utah home, Sister Randall prayed that she might know the right text for the song and then went to bed. Around 2 a.m. she awoke and as she lay there in the darkness and in the quietness, the words started to come to my mind, she said. Without hesitation, she got up, quote, I went in the other room and wrote as fast as I could write. The first verse came, then the second, and then the third, end of quote. Sister Randall, knowing where the words came from, immediately got down on her knees and said, Heavenly Father, thank you very much. Sister Randall said that several, several years after she wrote the text, President Spencer W. Kimball, then of the Quorum of the Twelve, heard the words and offered one suggestion. He said, quote, change the phrase, teach me all that I must know, to teach me all that I must do to live with him someday. Knowing is not enough, said Sister Randall, explaining the future church president's concerns. It is doing that prepares us to return to our Father in heaven. When asked by a church news reporter what she wants others to know about her, Sister Randall did not hesitate. She said, quote, that I am a child of God, end of quote.
The next song that we would like to present to you is If You Could Hide to Kola. This is a little change uh, a, bit, a bit here. Um, after W.W. Phelps personally aided the prophet Joseph Smith in the translation of the book of Abraham, he took one of the central themes of Kola, a star nearest under the throne of God, which also symbolized first creation, as explained by Bruce R. McConkie. And he wrote the now popular hymn, If You Could Hide to Kolob. The word Kolob appears in chapter three of the Book of Abraham in the Pearl of Great Price. It was first published in the Deseret News in 1856. A Poor Wayfaring Man of Grief is the next piece that we would like to present to you and the last one for, for this devotional. Written by James Montgomery, the words to this song are based on Matthew 25, verses 37 through 40. 
this hymn is special because of the role it played in the last few hours of, Pro of the prophet Joseph Smith and his brother Hiram's lives. Not long before the brothers went with John Taylor and Wilford, uh, Willard Richards to Carthage in June 1844, the hymn had just been introduced in Nauvoo. As the men sat in the Carthage jail, knowing their lives were in danger, John Taylor sang it twice, as this was one of Joseph's favorite songs, to cheer them up. Shortly after he sang it the second time, the mob attacked, murdering Joseph and Hiram. I'm still here, I'm just having a little bit of a hard time. <laughs> Can you still hear me? Yes. Okay. Anyway, and badly injuring John Taylor. The song began as a poem written by the English poet James Montgomery during two chilly, dreary trips in horse-drawn carriages in England in December 1826. Titled The Stranger and His Friend, Montgomery didn't expect the poem to become a hymn. Taylor later learned the hymn in England on a mission and included it in a Mormon hymnal published there in 1840. Thanks.
thank you, brothers and sisters, for uh, your patience um, and for being with us today in this devotional. Um, we have a testimony of music. We have a testimony that the Heavenly Father has given us music to help us in a lot of, for a lot of reasons. One of them is to hear the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. I don't know if you heard it today, but I, I felt it strongly, uh, especially when we're talking about Joseph and Hiram and, and John Taylor. Anyway, um, I'm not exact, I can't remember whether or not we have a prayer at the end, uh, but I wanted to ask the bishop if uh, he would be willing to, if he'd like to say a few words. Thank you, Brother Lee. Thank you to the Lee family. What a beautiful message and beautiful music. And um, I'm grateful for your, for your family for providing that for us. A uh, nice spirit. Uh, we will be making some announcements about um, our ward resuming sacrament meetings. Uh, we have deliberated and prayed and discussed it. Um, and we will be starting on June 14th. So we'll be getting more details out to, to the ward. Uh, and I'll be talking with Sister Bauer and, and uh, Brother Gates about some things that need to happen. Um, we, we, you're, you're a s fairly small but wonderful representation of the ward. And it's good to see you here. We want to make sure that there's a clear message that gets sent out that that no one is obligated to attend these meetings. It, it is an opportunity for those that feel comfortable meeting in a group, but no one should feel pressured to do so. And we're going to be, you'll be hearing that again and again from, from us, but um, it's going to give us an opportunity to gather and to partake of the sacrament together. So um, I just want to testify to you. I think it's, uh, it's also stated in my message that we send out today, but I have a testimony of the truthfulness of the gospel and, and I'm grateful for the direction. It provides me um, the comfort and um, assurance and hope. Um, I, I have a, a testimony of the restoration of the gospel of the truthfulness of the scriptures, of the atonement of Jesus Christ, and of our Father in Heaven's plan for us. And I know that um, we are blessed because of, of all of these things. And I say it in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Thank you, Bishop. Um, Brother Kettles, would you be willing to give us a closing prayer? Our beloved Father in Heaven, we're so grateful for the gift of music and uh, for the way that our hearts were uplifted and inspired today. We're grateful for the efforts of, of Lee's to uh, make this happen for us today. We're grateful for um, the ward that we have and for the friendships and associations that exist here. Father, please watch over each of us and help us to stay close to thee and, and strengthen our testimonies as we do the things that thou would have us do as we daily ponder the scriptures and study them. Help us to be aware of those who are in need and, and to be willing and able to reach out to them and help them. Bless and guide us in the week ahead. And we say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Good to see you. Have a wonderful week. Thank you, Lee. Thank that was you. great. Thank you. That was beautiful. Thank you. 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 you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll, we'll play a few more, uh, just a little bit more music while everyone leaves. And thanks again, everyone. Thank you, Liz. You bet. Thank you.
Are we done? Okay, have a wonderful day. Oh, Sister Gates is still watching. Sister Gates is still watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.